Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the weirdest books that I have ever read. And weird does not mean bad. There are good books on this list, but there are also books on here that I necessarily didn't really enjoy. And that's okay, enjoyment is very subjective, but let's go ahead and just get right into it. And the first one on this list is The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Kaw. Uh, this is actually a novella. I read this really recently, and this is actually the book that gave me the idea to do this list. And I actually saw the person who recommended this book uh, they did a video on a bunch of weird books that they had read and that's kind of where the inspiration for this video came from and The Salt Grows Heavy is one of the weirder books I have read. So the, the basic premise of this story is that we are following the story of a mermaid whose tongue has been cut out and a plague doctor as they travel along together. And what makes this book so weird, right? That's already a pretty weird premise. We're talking about a, a tongueless mermaid, uh, but this is also kind of a pretty dark book, but it's kind of written like a fairy tale. So there's some like very poetic, magical things happening, while well, at the same time there's like cannibalism and self-mutilation and mutilation of others, and there's just some really weird things going on in this book. Because it's so short, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil it for you, because this is kind of a book I'd recommend to like a very select group of people. The person who I saw recommend this book, they loved it and they raved about it. And that's actually why I ended up reading because they were so passionate about it. I knew I probably wouldn't like this book, but I still wanted to like broaden my horizons, experience something different. So if you're interested in a mermaid with no tongue who killed her husband and ate him and then fell in love with the plague doctor, I absolutely think you should give this a try. Like I said, it is very fairy tale esque There are some writing quirks in here that I think some people will really enjoy and might grade on others. I was more on the great side than really enjoy, but it is definitely kind of different not, not even different, but it does have that like, just there's like a flow to it, if, if that makes sense. I guess I will also mention there are definitely some like trigger warnings in here if you're not into like gore and like blood and cannibalism, I guess, basically. I guess technically she's a mermaid, she's not a cannibal, right? But uh, there are definitely some of those elements in here and it's a really weird book and that's why it's on the list. Next up on the list, and this one is going to feel like it comes completely out of left field and it's probably gonna leave you scratching your head because it's gonna be one that everybody is at least familiar with and that is the book Jaws by Peter Menchley. Now, yes, Jaws itself, the premise isn't that weird, but what's weird about Jaws is that there is only about 10% of this book that's like the movie, right? I'm sure most people are more familiar with the movie than they are of, of the book. We all know that this is the tale of a shark terrorizing a small beach during the summer and, and absolutely ruining the economy, all that stuff. It's killing people, all that stuff. What makes the book Jaws really weird is it's actually a domestic drama. It is the real desperate housewives of the beach. And <laughs> what's funny about that is, and, and weird, is you spend so much time dealing with these domestic dramas, like the wife, is a huge central figure throughout this book and it just feels so weird because you, you go into this book expecting the shark and it's not what you get at all. Another really weird thing about the book is that none of the characters feel like real people. They all feel like just angry. They're, they're just anger. Almost every single person in this book is just anger personified, right? They get angry about anything and everything you could possibly think of. Basically, nobody in this book is likable. And it's all just a very weird experience for the greatest summer blockbuster of all time, the, the movie that started summer blockbusters in general. One of my favorite movies of all time. I went into this book, book and was just completely blown away by how weird it was spending so much time on all of the domestic stuff that had nothing to do with the shark. It's like, 10% at the beginning, 10% at the end, and 80% in between is some of the weirdest stuff you will read in a book that you expect so much uh, different stuff from. The next book I wanted to talk about on this list is actually a book from my favorite author of all time, Session Liu, and that is The Cretaceous Past. Now, this is an extremely weird book because one, there are no humans in it, right? But the premise of this book is that the earth has been around for an extremely long time. And the fact that humans are the only intelligent species that has built civilization uh, has to be wrong, right? And so basically what we do is we go back to the Cretaceous and we follow the story of ants and dinosaurs coming together to become technologically advanced and go from the dinosaurs and ants we think of to basically having space flight. That, that's where we kind of get to in the story. And that sounds really weird. And it's even weirder how we get there. Now this is all explored very early on. So this isn't spoilers for the book, but basically what happens is ants crawl into a dinosaur's mouth and pick out a food that's stuck in its teeth that was giving it a toothache. And dinosaurs then learn that if they do this with the ants, that their, their teeth feel better. And then the ants start exploring the dinosaur's body and start learning dinosaur biology. And they start fixing other things on dinosaurs. And the next thing you know, they discover how to communicate with each other. They discover writing, reading, and the story just progresses as, as a civilization would, right? And 
The fact that there are basically no characters and we are legitimately f figuring out how a dinosaur ant society would work is one of the weirdest mind-blowing experiences I think you can have. I actually really, really like this book. I had a really good time when I read it earlier this year, but it is not for the faint of heart if you are not somebody who is into exploring a scientific idea. Sticking with sci-fi, I have to mention 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke here. Now, most of this story is, is very straightforward. Well, same with the movie. It is the story of space exploration, right? We're following a crew of people as they, they're traveling through space, right? Now, this is, a, I guess, a slight spoiler, but the end of this book is extremely weird. And if you know what I'm talking about, the baby, you, you know what I'm talking about. This is just one of those stories that I needed to put on this list. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna like overly talk about it because I don't even think I can. I don't think I fully understand what the heck happened there at the end of it. It gets weird. And I actually read this and then watched the movie the same day I finished the book. And even with that experience, I think I was still super confused. If, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I think you should just go ahead and I think you should watch the whole movie because it's really good. But if you want to just experience the weirdness and the trippiness that happens at the end of this book, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube, the end of 2001, A Space Odyssey, and just see the weird stuff Kubrick did on the screen and let it kind of melt your brain. It feels like you should probably be high while you're watching it. Uh, I wouldn't know, but <laughs> that's what it kind of feels like. And then speaking of being high, the other book I wanted to mention in the sci-fi genre is one another one I read this year, and that is A Time of Changes by Robert Silverberg. This is a really interesting book in a couple different ways. The writing of it is, is really weird, and it's gonna throw you off for a loop because the word I is seen as an obscenity, right? You, you would never say I did something. That is seen as extremely uncouth. Like that's not something somebody would say. There's all kinds of like religious things built around it and everything. But then there's also a, I think it's a plant at some point. I think it's a plant that they smoke or maybe they drink it in a tea. And it basically, it's like an LSD trip. There's no other way I can describe some of the things that happen in this book of two minds becoming one and melding together and learning all of these things, these deep inner emotional thoughts. And it's a weird trip, right? I'm not somebody who has ever done any kinds of drugs, but uh, Silverberg makes me feel like I have after reading some of his stuff in A Time of Changes. And another book I want to mention solely because of the writing, and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jeminson. This is a weird book. This is one that in retrospect, I don't like as much as I did at the, at the time I first read it but it is written in second uh, second point of view or second perspective point of view. I forget exactly what the, the proper term of it is, but it is written in such a weird way that I struggled for, a, for a, I'd say about the first 30% of this book to really figure out what was going on. I, I People praise it for this, right? And for me, it's actually one of the biggest weaknesses of the book, but it is a really weird experience to read a, a book in that you know, perspective. And so I think it is something you should do at least once is to at least experience like the first chapter or two of the fifth season because it's going to throw you off. It's going to throw you for a loop and it's very weird. Now it is time for the two weirdest books I've ever read. The first is called The Employees and I'm going to have to apologize, but I, I have to kind of read these ones because they're, they're, well, the first one isn't that weird. The second one is very weird. But so for the employees, this is the employees chronicles the fate of the 6,000 ship. The humans and humanoid crew members complain about their daily tasks in a series of staff reports and memos. When the ship takes on a number of strange objects from the planet New Discovery, the crew becomes strangely and deeply attached to them, even as tensions boil towards mutiny, especially among the humanoids. And what really makes this book weird is you have this weird tension between humans and androids and the androids in of themselves. And then there's this thing with an egg and the egg. I'm not sure I, I can, I'm not sure I can explain the egg. I wish I could explain the egg, but I'm not sure I can explain the egg. And I would say like, I had a, an okay time with this. I think it's pretty interesting, but it's really weird. And somebody recommended it to me and I'm really glad. This is another one of those ones where I'm really glad somebody recommended it to me because it is weird but it did get me out of my comfort zone. And then my last book, the weirdest book I have read of all time, and I'll apologize again, because this is one that I, I kind of have to just read from the Wikipedia page because I'm still not sure I understood any, like 2% of what happened in this book. This is another really weird one. And this is in Watermelon Sugar. And yes, if you were thinking of the Harry Styles song, this is actually where he got the name for that song from. So that is a fun little tidbit here. And that's actually why I read this book. I learned that and I was like, oh, let's see what this book is about. And let me tell you, I'm not sure I understand even after reading it and even after reading like the Wikipedia article, just, 
it, it's a weird book. And so here, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about it. And like I said, I have to read this because I, I personally cannot give a good representation of this book. In Watermelon Sugar is an American postmodern, post-apocalyptic novel by Richard Brockton, written in 1964 and published in 1968. Set in the aftermath of a fallen civilization, it focuses on a commune organized around a central gathering house, which is named Ideth. In this environment, many things are made of watermelon sugar, though the inhabitants also use pine wood and stone for building materials and fuel made from from trout. The landscape of the novel is constantly in flux. Each day of the week has a different colored sunset, which creates different colored watermelon, and the central building changes frequently. The novel's narrator, who is left unnamed, claims to be writing an investigative book on his experiences at eye death. Its first person narrative is sparse and minimalist, granting the novel a detached and alien quality, and an alien quality for sure. Like I said, it's such a weird book. I think you probably get a vibe for it from that brief description there, but it is another one of those ones where I like highly like would recommend people try out because it is just so weird and out there. It might just be something you end up really enjoying. I think I ended up giving that one a two star, so like I, I didn't super enjoy it, but man, it is weird and it is an experience and sometimes it's just kind of worth that when it comes to reading. But let me know some of the weirdest books you have read. I, I Obviously, this is something I kind of enjoy doing. I'd love to see some more weird books uh, on this list and you know experience some more weird stuff. So definitely let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, but that's all for me and as always, have a good one.